Live at five, an offer review, but who am I kidding? There's no offers, but this is highly exciting news from the player voice movement. Essentially, uh, there's going to be no more gold orb or training orb opening events, or like I used to call them, glorpenings. Gold openings? I don't know. So two issues on this. One, I am reasonably skeptical. The other one I feel is like very clear cut as far as it's going to play out. The first official meeting of the elected players council happened today with Scopely team, including your senior manager, will continue to have these sessions. The goal is to be able to communicate something out to the community that we can from each session. So please try to stay tuned from this server. Tell your friends, mates to come join if they want to stay in the know. I'll put a link to this server on the description because there's a poll that also I feel is going to be pretty important. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. And let's get to today's news updates. Today's updates, two particular items of note, character accessibility and more details about the prior announcement on orb forwarding events. And I feel like the first one is subject to interpretation and I'm skeptical, but let's read it. Maybe it'll be a positive change for the community in general. We are committed to most characters becoming more available after initial release within four months, but no longer than six months. That may not mean that they go directly into a store or campaign node right away, but they may appear as rewards in events for specific game modes to help keep commanders engaged for newer rewarding content. Exception to this rule include mode exclusive like Spider-Man Big Time, Super Scrolls, special cases like Zombie Iron Man that will be explicitly stated upon release. Now there's two characters uh, that might have been especially egregious in the last two years, and that would be Agatha and Icarus. I mean, they were a year, let's say. And I feel like the way that this is worded, it's open to their interpretation being different from my interpretation. It's different to your interpretation. So I am somewhat skeptical of this system, but if it does in fact mean that we're going to have a more meaningful consistent cadence of release of characters i'm a fan like if this leads to any kind of character being released let's say two months earlier than what was on their initial timetable this is a positive change i just feel like the wording here is a bit squirrely and their meaning of accessibility could be different than what the, the broader base community feels now the second part i'm pretty hyped about Orb hoarding events shelved, not just for July. And so when they announced that they were going to shelve for July, a lot of people are like, oh, we got to wait till August, right? No. And I've actually flushed all of my gold orbs and trading orbs because I thought that something like this was going to happen. The MSF team is removing gold orbs or trading orbs uh, opening events. During our last player council meeting, we were able to commit to July, but now put a stop to these recurring events. We have no plans to run these in the future. See, that also means that they could change their mind later, right? This doesn't say, like, if forever. We have no plans to ruin to run these in the future. I, I don't know. I feel like it's like a legal battle in reading these things. Now, something else of interest on that, uh, I'm going to put a link in the description of the player voice movement. There's a poll current one now. If you could get rid of one of these game modes, what would it be? Uh, and you could see that people are voting for RTA. Uh, some people are voting for Blitz. I personally voted for Blitz, but whatever you want to vote, that's kind of the whole point of the player voice movement is to uh, come to some sort of general consensus that is the best for the larger, broader-based community, rather just Krakens, just whales, you know, and so, just veteran players. It's meant to be for a, a broader base of uh, the community. Yesterday evening, uh, Nexus difficulty hard was opened briefly and then closed. And the reason why this is important is because uh, the last node of each of the two sections had a character that was gonna be farmable, absorbing man and dark beast, uh, was asked to developers twice what is going on with this. No word as of yet, we'll keep you posted, but yes, it was live. This is of high, 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 high importance to those players that are in Warzone 4. Uh, big shout out to Steven who said, I think you're already going to do this, but just a reminder that you might want to remind people to log in to auto claim the male war rewards before the Galactic Warzone events ends tomorrow. So 
Uh, the event ends tomorrow, but my war ends two hours before. So if you are in zone four, there's a two hour window where you have to log in. And when you log in, these rewards are auto claimed. So this is a big deal. I imagine it's also somewhat important for zone three, but it is super, super important because a large percentage of the rewards are based off of this. And so if you are in zone four, it's important for every member in your alliance to log in immediately preceding the finish of the war in zone four and before the end of the event, which is a two hour window. It's trash. And if you're unsure exactly what that is, my goodness, right here, if you go into the milestone tab, Galactic War Zones right here, you can see right there, 21 hours. So there is a two hour window for zone four. This is gonna be a longer post, but I think it's important. Glorious purpose scheduling, fix the reward scopely. And, and I know from my conversations uh, with the developers, they're aware that this was not optimal for the community and that they knew that this was not optimal for the community before the event finished. And uh, they brought it up to the, the people that created the events and hopefully this won't happen again. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. Uh, I'm loosely summarizing uh, the way that I felt the conversation, but I know that the developers, at least Cerebro and Archangel, know about this issue and whether or not they're able to convey to the decision makers that this is incredibly bad, but I just wanted to read this and I did pass this article along so they could, uh, this, this, this Reddit post along scopely screwed up the schedule an Alliance milestone that crossed over the end of the season. Yeah. And it was a significant amount of rewards, right? Like, um, the, the, it, 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 it the, typically people change alliances on Sundays, but the, 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 the Alliance leaderboard auction event ended on Monday and for me it was a meaningful amount of resources that allowed me to unlock a big boy apocalypse and the rewards didn't pay out right away so the event ended 24 hours after the reasonable time for people to switch alliances and then the payout didn't come for another 24 26 hours later now they're refusing to pay out rewards for members who stayed the extra day to the end of the event but were not able to wait around to inset alliance for them to generate rewards and it was unknown when that was going to happen. I think for, and, and not only that, everybody got paid out at a different time. I remember it was here on Twitch and a good percentage of the players inside of Twitch chat were paid out. And I was like, where's mine? Where's mine? Kept restarting the game, kept restarting. Mine came later than everybody else's. And I think it was a good 26 hours after the event ended, which was a good two days after the optimal time to switch alliances. Now, why is this a problem? Because we as players have no idea how long it's for them to generate rewards. Some takes a few hours, but typically it does take 24 plus hours and occasionally seven days. Why not just wait another 24 hours making alliance change? Because doing so means that members changing alliances are no longer qualified for the end of season rewards. So they're basically forcing players to choose between a crap ton a blue ISO five, which is insanely valuable and required to get a big boy apocalypse. And boy, I got to tell you, an awakened apocalypse is a entirely different character than a non-awakened apocalypse. It's like they're two different characters. It's it's significantly different uh, getting a big boy apocalypse and a sizable amount of gold from war season rewards. You screwed up. If you had ended the event on Sunday and advised us, you'd pay out rewards within 24 hours. We'd all wait until Monday. Made our players take all make. Their, ch their changes once rewarded had dropped. You had paid out rewards as soon as the event had ended. We had all been fine, but you didn't schedule the Alliance event to end on Monday and took the full 24 hours plus. It was like 26 hours for me to wait to send rewards and effectively screwed everyone that needed to change alliances last week out of their event rank rewards or out of their war season rewards. Take care of your players that held up their end of their bargain. If they stayed through the end of the event, give them rewards, they should have sent them. Customer service shouldn't be dicking around your customers like that. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like this is an issue with customer service. Uh, they shouldn't be ruining uh, people's experience. Uh, I'm not the one who didn't get his reward. I'm one of the Alliance leaders that put you into this awkward position, having to thread the needle of your scheduling created. Put the Lions in an impossible situation because it made us choose our teammates when they would move. 
we needed to move people out so they can bring people and we knew we were hitting up against a hard deadline of five days prior to season in order to qualify for end of season rewards yeah it's a mess and and customer service should absolutely uh be taken care of but be sure to go into uh in game into the store and purchase with your arena credits for uh points towards the event uh also there's a video up from tana i'm not going to get into this too much but um if you're looking for data mine speculation videos tana is back and he makes tons of videos and they're and the problem i have with data mine videos is that they can definitely change right but it does give us some insight to what the developers are thinking and it looks like they're moving in a direction where they're going to be eliminating leaderboards from future scourge events which is going to be the horsemen and the fundamental problem with ranking rewards and leaderboards is that it's based off the number of the players that participate in the event and when there's a shrinking player base or uh the the player base gets smaller because like players like myself no longer need to play in a morgan lafay event uh, it really skews things so uh we'll stay tuned until we have some sort of official announcement on what is going to happen just unlocked vol from what I can see, she's bad. No, she's amazing. I have four red stars for her. Is she worth level up? Yes, she's absolutely amazing. Uh, not only for Dark Dimension 6, but she's also going to be important in completing the harder difficulties of uh, the 1.6 uh, Mystic Lane in the Incursion Rage, which is bonkers. And then lastly, who do you use against Rebirth in Cosmic Crucible Room 6? I absolutely use Death Seed. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep on gaming. Bye for now.